I, I will also mention that um, I just actually, pump, well, my book is coming out on August 30th. It's called The Tiger and the Rabbit. And somebody, you know, we talk, started talking about Pepsi. All these Web2 companies are exploring, you know, Web3, Metaverse, AI. They all want to use them together because I do believe these technologies are converging. And uh, the really cool thing is uh, Wiley, who's the publisher, asked me to write the book as a business fable. So it's a story. Um, it has dialogue in it. So it's not like a typical business book that says, okay, this is what Web3 is. This is what Metaverse is. But it has a dialogue. It has a, um, a woman who's the CEO of a company trying to understand it, someone who's coming in and explaining it. Um, anyway, uh, Pepsi was one of the readers who wanted to get an early copy and give me a quote. And I think it's really fascinating. She decided to name her team the Rabbit Team, which is one of the recommendations I have for their Web3 team. Um, and I thought that was interesting because you just said, you know, these Web2 companies are going to be coming after Web3 here shortly. And that just shows you a lot of these companies, a lot of these big brands have Web3 groups inside of them waiting for the, the market to, you know, to turn around or to be more favorable on that trust metric in the space. And I think they're going to do some really amazing, amazing things. I love that. Yeah. And Cindy, what do you, what do you think that's, I mean, you know, like obviously, you know, being here for a long time, you know, uh, you know having a couple of domains, watching the growth and that, talking to a lot of these different CEOs and making partnerships. I mean, what do you think that's going to look like? I mean, do you think that these big companies are going to come in like just bulls in a China shop, you know, yeah. just trying to take and consume as much as they can? Or do you think that they're going to play right? I mean, like what, what, what do you think? I think it's going to be a mix. I will tell you that I think a lot of them, <laughs> are looking at Web3 from what the technology can bring that they don't have in Web2. So they don't really, to be honest, they don't really care that it's Web3. Uh, what they care about is, you know, they're trying to reduce their costs or they're trying to get to a, a real person. And therefore, the technology enables them to do that. So I, I think, you know, we're already seeing it today with Starbucks and Nike. Both of them have shifted their loyalty programs to Web3 and blockchain. Why is that? It's not because Web3 and blockchain is cool. What it does for them is it reduces their cost um, because now they don't have to have a paper, you know, a piece of paper or I don't know if you've ever seen those business cards. You come in, you buy a pair of shoes, you get a stamp on it, you might lose it, then you need another one. Um, so it reduces your cost, but it also gives them access to their customers. So let's just pretend we're Pepsi. And I want to do a promotion for my customers. Well, who are my customers? I don't know because you drink Pepsi in a movie theater. You drink Pepsi from a distributor. You might go into a, you know, In-N-Out Burger and get a Pepsi. Um, I don't really know who they are. But if I offered you a reward that lived on the blockchain, so I know it's you, it's verifiable, it's credentialed then I can actually reach you as my customer. So I kind of remove the middle person now, the middleman, and I'm able to reach out to you directly. That's what really gets these Web2 companies excited is the ability to reach out to their customers and to engage them. So when I demo, for example, messaging, you know, we had Alpha ahead of time so I could demo it. I mean, their eyes light up because they're like, just like you guys were, right? Now we can have a, a badge that represents our Twitter space, our breakfast club, and we can talk just to them. And that's the same thing that they're thinking is, oh, wow, this now enables me to credential and verify that someone is really my customer. And now I can engage them and I can engage them through that messaging. And they can engage each other because that makes a stronger community, right? Yeah. And Pepsi is definitely ahead of the game. You know what I mean? It, can you imagine, uh, you guys remember back when they did Pepsi points and they gave away the, yeah. the fighter pilot, the fighter jet? Mm -hmm. I mean, if that would have been on the blockchain, like, you know, like with QR codes or, you know, ease of access, you know, like that, you know, I think that they're definitely ahead of the game. If they're, if that's something that they want to do, you know, uh, we, I think we were just talking about that yesterday, Jay, like kind of the, the evolution of NFTs moving into the community yeah. or uh, like Costco membership cards and stuff like that. I think mm -hmm. that's definitely great. Yeah. I think that's going to be, I think, I think that's going to be one of the top use cases is loyalty for Web2 companies because it's so much, it's so cost effective. It gives you direct access to your customers and it's cool. Like you can do like cool badges and you can change things instantly. Right. Um, I was just working with a web two company yesterday and they have, they have this piece of paper. It's real. It is cool too. It's a passport. So just like your passport, 
And every time you go into the store, you get a, a new stamp, right? It's kind of like going to a new country. But um, they were telling me how many times people lose the passport, the cost of the passport, how many times someone comes in with their passport to get some discount or something they're doing. And they see the same passport come in like 12 times, right? Because how do you verify that that passport is yours? Right. And so I think it really gets them excited seeing loyalty, you know, like loyalty 3.0, um, I think is a big use case. I, I love that. I think that that's, I mean, as the, uh, you know, not as the consumer aspect, you know, but as the, uh, as a brand or as a business, you know, because we can't always be thinking of, you know, the advancement as, you know, as a consumer, we've got to think about, you know, people that are producing things for the consumers to consume uh, and how that can expedite what they've got going on. 